Today on The Grid, our topic is getting access and why it's so important for photographers. My co-host is from Kurvlekistan. He loves euros with ham. He's the former king of Siam. He's a friend of Jean-Claude Van Damme. He was disappointed when they chose Bram. He's a big fan of Wham. It's the real rocket man. Eric Kuna is here. <laughs> We've got some silky sweet giveaways, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. It is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. It must be Wednesday at about 1 o'clock on the East Coast. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna. Welcome to the grid. Mr. Kuna, how are you? Great. Great. How are you? I am well. So uh, yeah. we, we got a very interesting topic today. Yes, we uh, do. We are going to talk about... Uh, Getting access and why for so many photographers it's important and what we mean by access is getting to have entry to a place or access to a topic or whatever it is. Yeah, getting um, yourself in that prime location usually. Yes, in a prime location. And Eric and I uh, are going to talk about a real life experience that we had this weekend, which is much better than the fake life experiences. Uh, and. That is uh, and of course, we're going to be running the election ticker at the bottom of the screen the whole time. So no, I'm, not, I'm leaving. If this is a break it. from that. <laughs> this is a this is a break from that. We're going to just talk about photography today. We got some great giveaways and fun stuff. We're going to be giving away a Lytra Pro 2.0. I'm not a Lytra Pro. This is a Lytra Torch. Lytra, Lytra Torch. Torch 2.0. I, I I don't know where, which camera to go to. There we go. We're going to give away a light Torch 2.0, super bright little light, and people love, love, love them. We're giving one of those away today. We're also giving a giveaway a platypod gooseneck. It's Lucy. What is it's it? It's goosey. It's goosey. We're giving away a couple of goosenecks for your platypod. And so you can do stuff like this, by the way. So you can like mount. Look, you could even mount your Lytra right on there. Anyway, but it's not just uh, Lytras that will mount there. I'm giving away a copy of my latest book, the digital photography book. Though I am working on a new book. I've been heads down on it. I've just been work, 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 working on this book. And I, I don't want to tell you what it is yet. It's secret. It's a secret book. It's a, not a book I've done before. It's something new. It is for photographers. But it's, it takes a very different spin on things. And uh, the book's done. I've written it. I'm just collecting the images for it, which takes some time. So that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm at. That's why I'm not doing anything else. I've been heads down on that. So I'm behind on everything else. All right. So uh, what else do we want to talk about? Oh, real quickly, and then we'll get to our topic. We've got a big conference coming up in about two weeks. It's called the Flash Photography Conference, and it features, uh, it's two days, two track conference. Uh, it's going to be awesome, and one of the reasons why is the person that's teaching on track B. So I'm doing track A, which is flash for people who are kind of new to flash. If you always wanted to get really good at your flash, come to my track. If you already understand flash and you have flash and you're pretty good with it, Joe McNally is the whole second track, right? Oh, so yeah. the, the magical unicorn of flash the king of Flash, the crown prince of Flash, Joe McNally. He's amazing, and it's going to be live, and we are streaming it uh, from a studio uh, up north. I'll be streaming from our studio here, and we're going to have live shoots and lots of talking. And the day before, I'm doing a pre-conference session where you can come, and uh, if you're brand new to this, I'm going to get you up and running. We're going to start from square one on the day before. So on Monday, November 16th, right? Is that right, 16th? I think it's the 17th. Oh, no, 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 you were right. You're yeah. right. Monday, Monday the 16th, I'm the doing 16th. that pre-conference session. It's Correct. free to everybody that's signed up. So that's kind of give you a head start on everything. And then the next two days, you're just going to rock it. And we archive the classes for you for six months. So if you miss a class and want to go watch it or you want to watch a class again, you have, you have or full Or as you get better, you need to watch those Joe McNally classes. There yeah. You go. As soon as you get better, you're going to go yeah, up and watch the be... Joe classes. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'd love to have you join us. Go to kelby1live.com. We'll show you a little like official trailer from it later in today's show. So our topic today is based on something that Eric and I have been talking a lot about. So this weekend, Eric was kind enough to get me access to a, an air show. So it was a, an inaugural air show. It was the Lockheed Martin International Space and Air Show. I don't know what the space part was. Yeah. Yeah, right? There was no space whatsoever. It was an air show. You know what show. I think it was? 
We're close to NASA, so let's just call yeah, it Yeah, so space. when you're in Orlando, I mean, we were 35 you're a 45 miles minute drive the to cape, so. the Cape, so yeah. you know. Anyway, space. it was called a space and air show, but it was 100% air, and the Thunderbirds were there, which was great. So uh, one of the reasons I wanted to go, besides getting to hang out with Eric, and that's always fun, uh, is um, I, I, I got to shoot the Thunderbirds, and I'm going to go look up how long ago it was, but it was a good long time ago. In fact, let me just see real quick if I can tell you how long ago it was in a few seconds, but I can tell you I did not do very well because, yeah, here we go, the sky was absolutely gray. Now, I'm not going to show you the picture because it's, it sucks. Oh, but we want to see the gray skies. It's not good. It's 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 a white sky. It's literally you're flying in front of white cloud. I mean, I can show you, I guess, but it's just it's horrible. Let me let me just uh, the, my, the, the crew needs to see my stuff. So let me uh, let me go do this. The crew see my stuff button. Yep. I have to press a button that makes them see, and then they'll tell me if they can see it. Almost. In fact, this one's this one's a low res that is still under construction. Can can you guys see me in this in the in this? Oh, uh oh. No. <laughs> like the lights went out. It's like fade to black and end scene. End, end scene. <laughs> fade to black. So I'm guessing they don't see me, but my thing is running. It's happy. Oh wait, it quit. Oh, oh there you go. Oh. Try it now. Try it, try it. All right, so it's a crappy shot, and I'm still working on it. Okay, so you can see what I need to do to finish it off is in Photoshop is, is basically I need to clean up some of this stuff here. But it was, it was on such an awful background. Yeah, so you were just on that, like, Dude, when they get overcast Overcast, day, and, and it's and gray white and jets. white. And see, I was still, yeah, yeah, white jets. I worked a lot to get it to this, and it's, it's just not a good shot. It's a crap shot. So anyway, so when Eric said, hey, I'm going to shoot the show this weekend, and Eric was there for three days? I was there for three days, yeah. I was there for four hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> so anyway, but Eric was kind enough to go, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get us in, and we're going to go. We're going to meet up with another guy over there, and we're just going to have a really fun time. And, uh, and we did. So the first thing when we got over there, and, it was, and number one, I just love to go out shooting. And it doesn't even almost oh, matter yeah. what the topic is. Yeah. Uh, Eric and I have been on so many shoots together, and it's just fun. Also, Eric has all the things that I forget. And I forgot plenty. So I show up, and I go to shoot. And at the first thing, I like, the first planes are coming out. And we're like, okay. And, and I look at my camera, and it says, no card. <laughs> so, of course, I look over to Eric. Eric, you got any cards? Eric goes, I, I did yesterday when I had my big backpack. You know, I talk about Eric's magical yeah, backpack. I did. Well, I even commented to him. He had a baby backpack. I did. I, I, I simplified down, and then I realized, oh, this is why I carry the big backpack. Right, because Scott's going to forget his card. Now, luckily, yeah. uh, Eric's I had friend. The two, I had the 256 card, but then I turned to, I turned to Matt, who we were shooting with, and I yep. said, hey, you got cards? And he goes, Psh. Yeah, I got yeah, cards. He pulls out a whole thing, like a whole wallet full of cards. So he was kind enough to loan me. And, and I can tell you, I shot for four hours. Now, you got to realize, at an air show, you shoot for a very compressed amount of time, yep. and then there's nothing. Like, you sit there and do nothing, and you go get a burger, and then you go get another burger later, and then now two that's hot the one dogs, thing and Scott another did, burger. Scott, burger. you did remember was, and I think it was because of our conversation the night before, I said, Make sure you throw a, a, a folding chair yes. in your bag. Yes, he said bring a folding chair. There'll be a lot of sitting around doing nothing. So, yep. But I, I want to tell that. you, in that short amount of time, I filled a, a 32 gig and a 16 and a 16. What is that? 64 gig? Mm -hmm. I filled 64 gigabytes shooting in little tiny spots. Yeah, you're doing little bursts. Little bursts. Little bursts, and for little periods of time, like... Like a thing might go 10 or 15 minutes, but you got to realize, like a plane comes by, and then that plane goes way around and behind the clouds. You don't see it for a while. And then you're talking and you're chatting. And then one of, one of, one of somebody will go, it's coming from the left. And then you got to find it. Oh, there it is. It's, you're not shooting. It's, not, it's not like a football game where you're shoot, 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 shoot. I'm amazed. I, I was stunned that I shot that much. Yeah. Like I shot 1,800 photos or something like that, which is really, it's not, not a lot. Uh, so, hold on a second, let me, all right, so I, I was going to show you some pictures, and I will, I'm just, I'm, I, I've been working on this book, and I've been, so when I'm working yep. on a book, for me to get the book done, I have to close the whole rest of the world out, I just have to go like this, 
book, 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 book. So I really, did, I, I got to just make some pics, but I haven't finished the photos. They kind of look like out of the camera crap. Um, with the exception of one that I, 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 I did something to that I'll talk about when I get to it. Anyway, but th that's not what the topic is. But, so one of the things about air shows that is great is you don't really have to have great access. It's one of the few that places. That is one of the few things, that, yeah, with an air show, you yeah. don't really need the access. Right, you don't much. need the access. But for most other things, and when we talk about access, what are we talking about? Being able to shoot sports, mm -hmm. right? Uh, being able to shoot in places that you're not able to shoot in, okay? So, for example, um, let's say that there is a theater or an opera house or a, a cathedral, and they say no cameras allowed, which there's plenty and plenty of that. It's, unfortunately, it's growing. Uh, there are a lot of them that, that don't even let you take your phone inside and take photos. How do you get access to those places? And, and if you don't get good access, what you wind up with is either bad light, or a place that's full of tourists, or a you're shooting from the stands at a game, and the players are this big, and and this is the thing, and I were to talk about this because you, you'll hear a lot of reasons why people want a high megapixel camera. They go, I want to be able to crop in. All right, I was shooting a 30 megapixel camera, mm -hmm. and I crop in. Can I tell you something? It never looks as good. It's it's usable. Like when you yes. crop in? I mean, I think people, yeah, it, 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 yeah, there's a point at which you can crop in like 10%, 15%. Yeah, it looks fine. 20, but you start getting a 50 and it just falls apart. Right, and that's the issue I had. So one of the things that, that really messed up the shoot for me was I had a 100 to 400. Now, the last time when I shot the, the uh, Blue Angels. Yeah, Blue Angels. So I shot the Blue Angels. I went blank there for a second. I shot the Blue Angels. I took a 200 to 400 with a 1.4 tele extender. So most of the time, I'm shooting at 580 millimeter. And I realize that's what you need. Because when I went down to a 100 to 400, I'm shooting yeah. at 400. My pictures look like the planes are way the heck over. In fact, I'll, I'm going to find one and show you. And uh, give me just well, a second. Yeah, and I've got I've got mine that I, uh, go that ahead. I could show as well. So yeah, show here, some of um, yours, and I'm gonna. <laughs> here we go. So here's here's the uh, Blue Angels. I don't know if you can see it or not. Blue Angels. The <laughs> no, that's not mine. That, that's Scott's. All right, screen. there it is. Look. Oh, wait. Oh. Go back. Go back to mine go real away. quick. That's 400 millimeters. Yep. That's 400 all the way in. And when you crop in on that. It's not very good. Yeah. And you, you would have to crop in and to, like, to get a picture like Eric just showed. Now, go, go look at Eric's picture. Okay. That's 700 millimeters. 700 millimeters. And that's now. Now, let's take this off. This perfect timing. So, so listen. This is, what, this is what's going on with this. Why, this is why access is so important. And I'll tell you. And that is. Back to Scott. Yeah. And that is this. What kind of shots do we want to see from an air show, from a sporting event, from pretty much anywhere? We want to see shots that we can't see with our naked eye, right? We want to see shots that are like, now go to Eric's shot. You see the pilot, you see the detail, you're like, wow, it has impact and it's great and all. This is what we want. What did you say, 700 millimeter? That's 700, yeah, I can get... Uh... Yeah, let's see, like like here. You yeah, know. see, that's now. There are times where the plane is a little bit closer to you if it flies right over your head or it's just taken off. Right. See, that's a little wider. Yep. So Look, he's got that a that one eagle. Was an eagle flying through my shot. Go, go. <laughs> That's crazy. That's not the sound eagle makes, is it? So there, I think that. But see, look, you got the vapors coming off the plane. Yeah. You got the afterburners. You got all this. Look at this. Look at the vapes. But this is what people want to see. Right. They want to see that close-up shot. Now go back and look at mine. That's 400 millimeters. In fact, uh, go back to that shot. I think that's the same plane right there. Yeah. So if you go, that's the same plane. I'm yep. just brought in on it. It's funny. I have that exact shot, that, that exact one you did. But I had to crop in to get it. Yeah. So it is, it is very, very frustrating. So I, I, let me put it this way. I would not go shoot an air show with a 400 again. Now, ready for this? Here's the weird thing. What was, Eric, I'm going to ask you, far and away, 
What was the prominent camera at the air show? An iPhone. iPhone. Absolutely. Everybody's shooting with an iPhone. Everybody, everybody, a million iPhones. You know what the, if you think the 400 millimeter, you know what the longest my iPhone will go? What, 52? 52, <laughs> yeah. And, it oh, looks like a bird I'll, I'll get flying to, I'll off. I'll get to that one in a second. I'll talk bird about that Bird flying off in the distance. But, now, you can get some stuff like, you know, with the, like pulled back. Like, I think these are at Yeah, and I did some of that. I had to because I You got some of this, right? Yeah. Yeah, which is okay. But it's still not what people really want to see. They really want to see that. Where you see the pilot, you're right in there, you're right in the cockpit, you're seeing the exhaust come out. That's hey, look, here's, the, here's that shot that Eric had. I, so there are times when they do get a little bit closer, but this is also yep. cropped in quite a bit. So there are times where they get a, a bit closer and you're, you know, you want to get the vapor trails and all that. That's a, you know, because after a while you're shooting gray planes, shoot flying through the sky. You want something more interesting and the vapor trails do actually make it. And everybody that you talk to when you're out there shooting, they're like, I think we're going to have vapes today, man. I think we're, and then, and then everybody's, yeah. uh, we, we want vape. Want yeah, that vape. You want vape. You don't want to just shoot the, uh, yeah, look at that. Now mine's not done. So that's mine's, yeah. mine's still, uh, I yeah. haven't, I haven't processed these photos but, yet. But and they still, need it. still, that, I get what you're saying. Like it's just that extra little bit of reach. Yeah. Now, you know what? Let me find it. Give me just a second. I did okay on these shots where, so this is at a 60th of a second mm -hmm. because yeah. I'm trying to get, look at the nice rotor spin I got yeah, on the Mustang. That. Under P-51, so this is called a, a heritage flight, and it's where they mix old planes with new planes, so you've got the, you know, the newest jet fighters, then you've got a plane from the Gulf War, the uh, A-10 Warthog, and then above it here you've got a World War II, you know, and it's, and it's a very popular thing, a every air show does it, this heritage flight, and it's neat to see, because each one of the, the planes does a pass, and then they meet up, and then they kind of fly as a group, and it's just a a neat historical moment. Yeah. Uh, but can I tell you something? You know how many shots I had to get at a 60th of a second to get a sharp one? I think I'll bet I took a hundred and I bet I have two or three that are sharp. I know that's what it's so no, hard. I haven't when, sharpened when you see, these yet. I got when a you see those panning shots or yep. the ones with the rotors or even like I had that B 25 uh, bomber, like yep. going, I might have 20 shots and there's only one in there that I'm really, really happy with. Yeah, I went yeah. too slow. Here's another one if you want to see it real quick. Look at that nice rotor mm -hmm. on that. On that. Yeah. But I, I can show you. I'll pull up. Look, give me, Eric, give me a second. I'm going to pull up what the rest of them drive. look like. I don't have my drive. I can see rest. it too. Because you see it and the planes are like all looking like all wonky. And they're all blurry. And then Here's what the rest of them look like. Yep, that's it. Right there. <laughs> all walked out. I got a bunch of them. Yep, that's what, that's what the rest of them look like. They look like but that's the rod. key when you're shooting prop planes is to shoot at that slower. I mean, you yeah, were I, I went a little too slow. Is, that, that's no, ambitious. I Look, I that's knew ambitious. I was going slow. Everybody else would have been at either a 200th or 125. I was at one 125th on most yeah. of those. Yeah. Now the helicopter one I showed, I think I went down to one yeah. 30th, but the helicopters are moving so slow. Yeah, it's, it's trash. I got, these are oh, trash. Oh, and I think that biplane might've been slower too. Look at that. So you get a whole bunch of these, but, but here's the thing. And this is what I want you guys to think about when we're, when we're talking about this stuff. Today we're, we're, we're helping photographers, but if I'm going to put a picture into my, my um, aviation portfolio, right? How many shots of a heritage am I going to put in there? One. One. That's all you need. One. All so you need. I don't need a hundred to choose from. I need one good, sharp, clean shot. So that's that's why I don't mind. And I know when I'm shooting it. I'm going click, 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 click. I'm like, these are gonna be trash. But I'm counting on the fact that one or two of them, maybe more, are gonna be, but it, it's gonna be like three percent, five percent. Now, I haven't shot aviation in literally an entire year. The last thing I shot was in Houston, or no, Fort Worth, um, the Alliance Air Show. So I haven't done any panning, and there are people that can pan. I bet Moose Peterson can get 20 out of 100, where I'm getting three, mm -hmm. you know? So they probably can drop more. way low, because that's right. where it starts really looking good. Right, and, and you want, what you want is that full rotor, you know, you mm -hmm. don't want the little, you know. So anyway, that's kind of where, where we're at. But, but I do want to say, 
getting getting uh, access to an air show. An air show is one of the places where you have the best opportunity if you have the right lens. Now, let's talk about other situations where you want to get, because one of the things that people ask me about is getting access to shooting sports. And we're gonna talk about that right after this when we come back from the break. We're gonna talk about access to sports, access to buildings and access to other things. But I think you're getting an idea of yep. access, getting close to things. Getting into the action, putting the yourself key. in the right places. Yep, yep. And we'll look at some more photos when we get back. So yeah. we'll, we'll see those in a minute. But stick around. We'll be right back We're live here on The Grid. Light is photography. That's why, besides the camera itself, perhaps the most powerful tool a photographer has is a flash. When you hold it in your hand, you're holding the ability to create light on demand. When you understand light, you can create drama, mood, and emotion. For many photographers, learning flash has been an uphill battle, and some have simply given up. But that's all about to change. What if you could spend two full days with two of our industry's most passionate, gifted teachers, who would finally demystify flash for the beginner and push and challenge more experienced flash users? Can you imagine just how far you would go in those two days? This fall, you'll have that opportunity as two of the top flash authors and educators come together to create a truly unique learning experience. Joe McNally, the man who opened the photographic world to the real power of flash and inspired an entire generation of flash users through his books, The Moment It Clicks and The Hot Shoe Diaries along with Scott Kelby, author of The Flash Book, the number one best-selling book on Flash for the past three years, have come together to coach you, to mentor you, to teach, inform, and illuminate by sharing their latest Flash techniques, their hard-earned secrets, and even the post-processing and retouching work that goes into making stunning, remarkable images as you uncover a whole new world of light powered by just a simple flash. It's two full days, all presented live, all online. This is the Flash Photography Conference. The power of light is in your hands. For over 20 years, leading software developer Boris FX has made its mark on the film and television industry. Now, for the first time, our Academy and Emmy Award-winning visual effects tools are available for photographers. Welcome to Optics. Optics is a collection of 160 filters for Photoshop and Lightroom. Simply apply the effect and launch the interface. Optics features thousands of customizable and creative presets for photo editing and effects layering. The top tools include lens flares for cinematic looks, Realistic night skies with star fields and moon generator. Add lightning with on-screen interactive control. The Easy Mask tool creates masks with just a few clicks. Optics is available now as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom and includes the standalone application for Mac OS and Windows. Get Optics now for 15% off. Visit BorisFX.com, add Optics to your cart, and apply coupon code KELBY15. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo. The professional source since 1973. Hey, yo. Hey, we're going to talk about the uh, sports stuff in one second. Uh, first, we want to say hi to some folks that are joining us from around the world. Then I want to tell you about something yeah. that you might want to look into. We it's got, not our thing, but it's a, a thing. Yeah, we got them joining all around the world. So we got uh, Kis Kiski from Romania, uh, Lori from Newfoundland. Uh, we got Alex joining us all the way from Guatemala. And then we got Priscilla from Brazil. Corrado from Genoa, and then we got Pee Wee from Maine. We got Mike over there saying hello. Uh, Glenn from Calgary, Deb from California, Becky from Goodyear, Arizona. We got David from Indiana, Warren from California. We got John uh, joining us. So all over the world, we got tons of people joining us uh, to talk about this topic. So, so speaking of access, right? Yeah. So sorry, back to you, back to, yeah. back to the access. I was looking for something here. Um, so we want to tell you uh, a place where you're going to get some, if you're into aviation, if you want to get some amazing, amazing access. Yeah, yeah. There is a, 
an, uh, a, a, it's called the International Society of Aviation Photographers. And it, the president is a dear friend of ours, Larry Grace, who Larry actually helped us get access yep, yep. To, the, uh, to the air show. Uh, Larry has- He's always a, got access. That's Larry right there. And Larry is, is number one, one of the nicest guys just in our industry. He is really a prince. Uh, number two is he's a great aviation photographer and a great uh, teacher as well. And he runs this organization and they they have a, a convention. I've, I've been there uh, numerous times as a speaker. And I've also been there as a guest. And it is and they publish Airspeed magazine as well. It, mm -hmm. it is an amazing organization. It is absolutely wonderful. And their conventions. Oh, is that a Kuna rocket shot there on the cover of Airspeed yeah, right there? There's a rocket. There you go. But uh, anyway, go check them out. Their their uh, website is aviationphoto.org. Here, let me show you. Let me. I'm going to start over here for. Look at that shot, air to air, right there. I know the guy that took it. Uh, that's my shot. Woo! High five. Woo! And anyway, they have all kinds of AJP photographers, uh, military, commercial. You know. Uh, anyway, it's a great group, and their convention now. They, they're no one's having their convention this year, but hopefully they'll have it next year. And they get you access to stuff like you cannot believe. I mean, like you're out there in the middle of the runway at a naval base. In the middle of the, I mean, like yeah. you're in that little patch of grass and the planes are flying right over your head. I mean, it's like. And, and that's where the access, that's yes, the access. access. That's what's great. So that is one way is to get in with an association. Like if you're into this, number one, you'll learn a lot. It's a, it's a great organization. So just go join and you'll love Airspeed Magazine. Look at that shot of that A380. Uh, anyway, it's just a wonderful group well, of people. While, while we're talking about access, let me let me talk about one other access point before we move on to sports. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, so here's another one. Uh, you know, so Matt was one of the guys uh, we were shooting with. So uh, you can go follow him over at Matt Haskell Photo uh, on my screen here. Uh, but anyways, we were shooting with Matt, and um, you know, so and there Matt's even got the Eagles right. We were we were we were so like pumped and jazzed when we saw the Eagles come through our shot. Um, but anyways. So I'm hanging out with Matt, you know, we're, we're talking and I'm like, you know, hey, Matt, there's this full moon happening. So I was like, there's this full, full moon happening tonight. And he got me in with the F-16 team, you know, to, to meet with them. And I was talking to them and, and just saying, hey, look, at, there's a full moon rising over the airport tonight. It'd be really cool if we could get the jet in front of the full moon. Uh, so what I did is I actually, I took out photo pills while we were there, you know, uh, shooting with the team and I took out photo pills and I showed them with photo pills, like, Hey, look at, there's your F 16. There's where the moon's going to be. We can really get some cool shots. And of course their public affairs officer was like, Oh my gosh, we got to do this. So he got us access to come back onto the airport, onto the, the, the tarmac at night to shoot because I had showed them what, what we could do with it in photo pills. And we were able to get shots like this, where like here's the moon rising over their, over their uh, demo jet. Oh, uh, that's cool. You know, so we were able to get the, like the moon rising, uh, got them over the tail. Um, then we were able to do wider shots where we could actually do the moonlight lighting up the rocket, <laughs> rocket, look at me, lighting up the jet <laughs> with, uh, with other stuff. And it was a really cool, not only experience for me to get to shoot something like this, but I was able to teach them how to, how to plan out this stuff. And I actually sold, sold a couple copies of uh, photo pills, even though I don't get any kickbacks, which I wish I did, but uh, or, so we were able to do that. So all from getting access from somebody, then taking that access, show, making a, you know, befriending somebody, showing them a new technique, showed their photographer how we could, how we could use photo pills and and then we were able to come back and do a shoot like that. So really cool stuff where you're able to get that, you know, those shots that nobody else has because you just, you talk to people, you befriend people, you show them a new technique, you, you share something with them and they're able to then pass that along to somebody else. So that's where that stuff kind of builds on each other. Very yeah. nice. You got some great shots there. Oh, and thanks. You, 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 uh, you found a great way to get access. Right, exactly. Right. And, so. you know, um, hang on one second. I'm, I'm, I'm marking a few shots to show you here. And that's what I find with access. A lot of times it's just finding people, 
becoming friends with them, becoming acquaintances, something like that, sharing some knowledge, maybe sharing some, like, but I think sometimes people, the way they get into trouble is they try to, like, I don't, I don't, I don't have a better word, but weasel their way into places, and you have to almost, like, gain people's trust uh, give them back something. Uh, well, yeah, it, you know, it, it, there has to be something in it for them. There has to be reciprocity, right? Yeah, so. it can't just be you weaseling. Yeah, and that's where you got to, you know, and, and that's where I have. I sent these photos to the team, said, hey, hey look, at, look at what we did. This is awesome. Um, and, you know, the, you know, they've already said, like, hey, what else can we do? You know, so then that becomes a relationship that we can build on. And that's what Eric wants, a relationship he can build on. Absolutely. All right, hold on. I'm just gathering this here. for. We'll talk about this Absolutely. in a minute. Absolutely. I really need to go work on these images. Okay, so, all right. So, sports. Sports. So, uh, I, I, I wanted to be able to... I've shot that. I'm sorry? Sports, I've shot that. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So, I wanted to be able to, to, to shoot real football games. So, it, it is great to shoot a high school game. As opposed, to, as opposed to the fake football game. Right, as opposed, they're, opposed they're to really fake football bad, game. Yeah. Uh, I got to move. Oh, wrong way. There we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> so, um, and shooting high school football game is great. The action is great. But high school football games in the U.S. primarily happen at night, on a Friday night, under the worst possible lighting situations known to man. So the reason why you want to be able to shoot college and, and a, even pro is because they usually take place in the day where lighting is great and you can get super fast shutter speeds to uh, freeze the action without getting noise. How do you get access? Well, and I've been asked this question many times. It starts with shooting a high school football game. You yep. got to start there. That's it. You got to get That's some it. good shots. How many good shots do you need? from a high school football game to convince a college to let you to shoot? 10, eight? Yeah, I was gonna say a dozen. Yeah, a dozen, that's a it. Dozen. You don't need like a portfolio and all this kind of stuff. But um, so anyway, so how do you get in? So there's, there's just a few different ways to get access to sports. Number one is you can offer to shoot for the team. So let's just, let's just talk about college at this point. You go to a college and you go to the sports information director, who is the person that's basically in, you know, in charge of sports information for the school, and say, look, I'm a, I'm a budding photographer, I'm, I'm in your hometown, I'm a big fan of your team or whatever, I would, I, it would, I would kill for the opportunity to be able to photograph when I've shot high school, here's some of my high school shots, so I have experience, I know how to be safe on the field. Um, it, could I come possibly and shoot a game? Doesn't have to be a big game. It can be one of your, you know, out of conference games, and I will give you all of my best shots to use. I'll give you 20, 30 shots that you can use on the school's website. You can use it for whatever you want, and and that's it. That's our trade. But there's got to be a trade. The trade is you let me shoot your game, and I'll make photos for you. So it is a barter. You're bartering mm -hmm. access for images. That's very common. It's also very common in model photography. Mm -hmm. So for model, how do you be able to get to shoot a professional model rather than shooting your cousin or your buddy or whatever? You go to a professional model and, and there are websites that you can go to that will say, you know, hey, I want to do, and it's called TFP. So, uh, it's either and depends. I've heard a bunch of different ways to describe it. Time for prints. So I'll make you'll make your time available yep. to, for me to shoot you, and I'll make you either prints or images. Or I've heard it called trade for for prints, or trade for portfolio. So the model has images. So you it's, both yeah, it's win. It's basically the concept of you're giving your time, they're yep. giving your time. Exactly. You're getting images, they're getting images. You know. Right. It's possible I over explain that. Anyway. <laughs> Eric stepped in or oh, anyway, so that that is the deal. So for sports and stuff, you, you kind of have to start at high school, show a college some. And you know what? The college might say no or they might go, well, wh how about try it again later in the year? We're playing, you know, that's Wake Forest. usually the response you get at first because I've tried that. You know, yeah. We did the same thing. Yep. That's what you get at the beginning is kind of like, a, well, maybe another game or maybe another. And you ask maybe the third time and they say yes. Right. Yeah. Now, another way 
is to get some help. So I was, and it's a long story, I won't go through it, but I was able to meet a guy who invited me to shoot a, uh, uh, a game with him. So he gets an extra photo pass for every college game that he shoots, and he had an extra photo pass. I can tell you, I never get an extra photo pass. Never, 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 never. Uh, and if I'm shooting like a bowl game or an important game, then I might get a runner. So someone that will take the images out of my card, go upstairs, crop them, add the metadata and send them to the sports you know, desk or at a news service or something. I've had that, but I never get it. Well, anyway, he gets one every game. He gave me one and I got a couple of college shots. Once I got some college shots, I sent the college, my 10 best college shots from different games. Um, because it's, it's so weird how once you get your foot in the door, Eric, like, you know what I mean? Like, for example, Eric got his foot in the door with those pilots, right? Yep. He delivers. He, he, he took good shots. He did what he said he was going to do. They like it and say, what are we going to do next? That's how you get the access. Now, Eric didn't pretend to be friends with them because, I mean, Eric, is, he likes people. So he's, you know, he's not, <laughs> Eric's not devious. Eric's not like, I need to befriend yeah. that guy. Be the nice only to him, reason so. I want to be friends with these people. Right. Eric just meets people and then the things happen. Because once you meet somebody and you're, and you're on an air team, like, hey, I'd love to do some shots with you guys, you know. But you're going to have to make some kind of connection. Obviously, it's so, so, so easy um, if you do make friends with someone. Because that's how I got my first college shot. Yep. I took the college shots and I went and applied to a news wire service. So that's the other way to get into shoot football. You can shoot. You can shoot for the team, right? You can actually shoot for the team. You can shoot for the school. Here's another one. Ready, ready? You can shoot for a sponsor. Think of how many sports, local and college, have a sponsorship deal, right? How do you know who the sponsors are? Look at the posters around the stadium. Look at the sponsors are. So let's say the sponsor is a, mm -hmm. an oil company, right? Uh, or a beer company, contact their PR department and say, hey, I see you guys are sponsors of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, I'd love to go shoot some promo shots for you guys. Uh, I'll shoot the game and I'll shoot all kinds of promo shots. Of I'll, I'll get shots of players with your logo in the background. And, all. and yes, you have to fulfill what you're going to say for them, but then you're on the sidelines of a game, right? And I've done that. I, I got a deal uh, with uh, Indy, so uh, Indy Racing, you know, the Indy Racing League. Um, I, I did, I did a, um, a shoot for them in St. Petersburg. And I sent that, well, I know, I'm sorry, I didn't do it for them. I was shooting for the city of St. Petersburg at the uh, Indy Race in St. Pete. I sent some of those shots to Indy and said, hey, I'd love to shoot for you, you know, at uh, next year's race. I shot last year's for St. Pete. I'd love to shoot for you. Why do I want to shoot for Indy instead of St. Pete? Because it's Indy. More access. <laughs> no, you get to go places that the people from St. Petersburg, yeah. like I'm shooting for the city of St. Pete, right? Well, that's what I mean. I mean, you're shooting for the right. car but race. But when you yeah. shoot for them, now you're getting all, you know, can I get over here? Can I get behind there? Can I get behind this wall? Is it okay? You know, once you get that access, now you're going to get shots that nobody else is getting. But they said they made me a deal. Yes. Well, you can shoot the race, but here's what we want from you. I need shots of sponsors. I need shots of fans. I need shots of people having fun. I need it for our website. I need it for our Instagram. I need it for every, will you do that? I'm like, dude, you, I got you. And I did, I did a great job. And they said, gosh, you did so great. Do you want to shoot the Indy 500 up in, uh, in Indianapolis? So it's that chain of, you still got to deliver what you say you're going to do. You're cause if you don't deliver, right. you're only doing it once. There is no, like with Eric's thing, if he well, that's, that's gave what you crap have shots, to do. that's the end of it. Yeah. You have to like build up and that, well, that's to go back to like, we were talking about with sports. You don't want to jump into an NFL game. You want to be shooting the Friday night lights game yeah. because what you want to build is you want to build up to when you walk into an NFL game, you're not just, figuring stuff out you want it to be natural uh and all that yeah. and that's really what it comes down to with a lot of these styles it's just getting to the point where it's natural for you to cover an event where you're not fighting with it right and yeah. and the, making friends you have to deliver yeah. you have to deliver or like you said you'll you won't get access if you don't deliver you just don't get access yeah anymore. and I have, I have a little follow-up story on that that's something else that helped that i would recommend that you do uh when we come back from the break we're going to talk about that i'm going to share some more pictures uh shot with a 400 which is painful <laughs> and then 
I'm not doing that again. I'm not, I'm gonna get a 1.4 tele extender. 400's not enough. But we'll talk about that when we get back. Don't go away. Multitask with Platypod, the ultra commercial twin pad. Distance learning during a pandemic is a challenging situation. With the Platypod Twin Pack, you can teach your students just like before by letting them see the big picture. Nothing puts the board in boardroom like the same old view. The Platypod Twin Pack easily fits in small spaces, so you can unlock a variety of unique angles that share the whole story. When you can't waste time on multiple setups, let the Platypod Twin Pack be your sous chef. It captures multiple angles simultaneously, so you can focus on what you do best. Sometimes just getting around your quick can be your life an elaborate production. The Platypod Twin Pack clears the floor of tripods and light stands, so you can use the entire room! Now more than ever, we're learning to adapt. We've moved the office into the bedroom, and we moved the gym. Whoa! The Platypod Twin Pack is just as adaptable. You can mount or strap it to just about anything. Turn any location into a professional setup. Yeah! Ooh. Platypod Twin Pack. No matter who you are, or what you do, or where you do it, mm. double your creative impact with the Platypod Twin Pack. Go to platypod.com to get your twin pack today. Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a fine art artist. I love Sneak Peek because you can host all your photos online. You can share the best one through albums with incredible privacy settings. For example, you can just share an album to like three people or for just a number of hours. They have amazing watermarking on the fly where you can just change your mind and watermark and redo the watermark or take it out and it's instant on all your photos. Having an official portfolio is so vital today. Now they have an amazing launching deal where for just taking the basic subscription we're offering now, which is roughly $15 a month, you're going to get a professional designer to do your website for you. All you have to do is fill in a form with a few data and you're good to go, a designer will design your website for you. So if you don't like web design, this is a great opportunity. I think we're better off taking photos and learning how to do HTML and CSS and getting the most perfect website ever. I mean, even if you were to go the route of WordPress, which I did for many years, having a WordPress is free, but you need to host the WordPress. And a good hosting service is between 10 to $20 a month. So all you have to do is click the link below and get the offer. You will get this special price, which is 50% off for the first year, but you're gonna get it for life. So get it now. I love my Sleepic website. I love the business that it drives me and I want the same success for you. Get it now. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Oh, hi. Hey, we're on. <laughs> all right, so, so interesting chain of events that are happening here. So uh, I just get a text from Larry Grace, who we were talking about, Larry. He's the president of, the, of ISAP, the International Society of, of Aviation Photography. And uh, anyway, he, uh, we're trying to see if we can get him to Skype in, and we'd love to hear some of his talk about this. But he did send us a couple of uh, shots. And so here is a, so here's a Viper, right? from, uh, looks like from Team Viper there. Uh, can you see my screen? My screen working? Not that, that's mm, Eric's. That's mine. That's why it's, okay. So this is what, Larry's thing was, this is what he does when he doesn't have the reach. Now, I looked at the metadata of this shot. That's a 500. Mm -hmm. He's shooting a 500, but watch the tight crop. Look how much better, how much, I mean, this yeah. is why, th this is good and this is great. Like when you get in tight like that, it really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're in the in the background. We're trying to see if we can get Larry to Skype in with us for just a few minutes, and hopefully, because uh, you know, it's uh, I, he said I'm watching this and it's killing me not being able to like to you know add in because it's the educator in Larry that's driving him nuts. So maybe we'll we'll get lucky here. He's texting me. Oh, he doesn't have a Skype account. Well, oh. never mind. Oh, Larry. 
Don't you know that there's a global pandemic and we all talk through Zoom and Skype and Google Teams that we don't really talk to each other in person? It's not what we do anymore. All right, anyway, so anyways, access, that's a shame. But you access. know, we're going to have Larry back just to be on the yeah, show, yeah. to be a guest, and Definitely. we'll give him uh, six weeks to get a Skype account. Yeah, we'll give him six, six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. But we'll, uh, all right, so that's that. Now, uh, I'm going to share a few pictures real quick. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're not they're not awesome and I'll, I, I'm, I'm so I would have to say am I a little disappointed in in how I did uh, yes I am <laughs> because I'm not disappointed like I'm 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 bad photographically uh, I, I'm bad reach wise and and I can get a little cropped in but if I crop in any more but there, there is something I want to show you in here about how important it is having clouds I'm okay yes. with having a nice blue sky here yeah. and there but uh, as you'll see, it's kind of, kind of go through. We had, we had different challenging, but these aren't, remember how close Eric's were where they filled the screen, right? He's at 700, I'm at 400, and these are cropped to get into that. But you, it's gotta be a really, really sharp shot for you to crop in like that. Yes. Right, and, and, and you'll see somewhere I let it go wider. And these are, and these are not post-processed. This one, they were all backlit, and I just decided to let it. So I cranked up the highlights. This mm -hmm. is one of the only ones I got to actually work on. But I thought I might. Now this is the Heritage flight before the Mustang before shows the Mustangs, up. Before the Mustangs, yeah. The all right, Mustang, and yeah. did I show you this Mustang shot yeah, before? Yeah, all right, that so was the one. there's another one. Look how nice that at sixty at sixtieth of a second. Yeah, that's great. And then there's another one at sixtieth. There's the ugliest plane ever, the Warthog. Warthog. That Warthog did a bunch of passes, and I, I'm like. I, even a, even a good sharp cut. picture of a warthog. I stopped. I didn't even shoot. I played on my phone. Uh, there we go. That's kind of a neat one. Got some vapes. Look at those vapes, baby. Mm -hmm. Now, every once in a while, they did a pass that was closer. But most of the time, they're over the airfield, and then they're far away in this big circle. So it, it's tough. This, You know what I love about these? This looks like an air-to-air -air shot. It yes. looks like... And that's because they're far enough away... Right there, far enough away, and you can zoom in. But, I mean, that's 400. It's as close as I'm going to get. But look at the clouds. What a difference the clouds make, right? Oh, yeah. And the, not beginning just a, of the, the beginning of the Thunderbird show is really nice light. Yeah, we had a good light for a, little, for a little bit. And then they come right over the crowd sometimes, so you actually have to back off a little bit. Look at the, just the blue sky. I think it's mm -hmm. a nice change every once yep. in a while to just have the solid blue sky. Anyway, I got to work on these. These like they all need post processing, so they need work. But I'll get there. I just haven't had a chance. Like, look how dark the plane is. You know, the 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 camera's exposing for the whole scene. It didn't really, you know. But uh, some of these that are wider like that, I'm okay with. And I do have one, Eric, that was just like yours. That was that one where they're way off to the side. And I'll have one of those. I don't know if yeah. we're gonna see it here, but I do have some that were kind of like dramatic. Like, there we go. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> like that. Yeah, so there are times where it's okay. Because it's like, it's a, just a different kind of shot. That was kind of crap. <laughs> There's some crap shots in here. Yeah, it, it is what it is. So, but would I, I would go again. I would just, I would not go with a 400. So there's a nice close shot shot. But I, but I wouldn't go if I didn't have like, a 500 or a 600 or a 1.4 with a telly or something. I would need something a lot more. See, there's another one of those wide yeah, ones. I think it's ones. because of the clouds are interesting. I mean, the planes are flying in a typical formation for the Thunderbird. That one's all right. Mm -hmm. But again, if I work on these a little bit, ooh, I like that one. If I work on these, uh, you know, they'll be better. They're just, there's nothing here that I'm like, woo, you know, like I was much happier with my, Thunderbird shots because Larry was standing next to me. He 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 just makes he gives you a certain uh, like super juice. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, I want to read. Uh, I'm gonna have Eric read this comment. We got a comment from Joe Dussel, uh, and and uh, he's he's got a really good access point here. Yeah, um, he's saying I I know you want to stay away from politics today, but for one thing, um, I actually like to do is shoot political events. Doing that also leads to session work for uh, lo local politicians. I have photographed for pay um, around a dozen local politicians for their campaigns, headshots, and for some of their events. Um, and this is due to access from those political events. 
Yeah. What? Hey, Joe, thank you for sharing that because that's 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 kind of the stuff that we're talking about. Well, and, and you go in that's, one door and you wind exactly, up going through three. That's exactly it. I mean, that's where you know, even even with shooting uh, events that I shoot, like even even the you know, you think about like the rocket photography. The the access point is not much different than what you describe for sports or even like the political events. You, you just have to get in. I mean, the, the, it's very similar to sports where you have to build up a portfolio of work, like you said, 10 shots, eight shots, 12 shots, where you're shooting somewhere off site or you're uh, somewhere where the public's viewing and you're just getting great shots and you have really great shots of the subject. So the same thing with sports. If you have really great shots of the subject, then you're going to somebody, so you're going to an editor, you're going to a, a news outlet, and you're saying, hey, I'd love to cover these events for you. And then um, you, know, you might start out where you're covering the events. A lot of people come um, start out like what you're talking about, where they're trading uh, access for work. But yeah. then that turns into, you get really good at it, you're not trading access to work anymore, you're getting hired or assigned to cover stuff. And then to the point where it's happening now is where people are calling you up and going, hey, um, we have a payload going up on this. We want to hire you to do, like you said, website shots or, or shots for our blogs or our social uh, and, and other things that they want. So that's where, like what, uh, what was described there, where you're, you're kind of starting out somewhere, then you're building those relationships to where people are hiring you to do this stuff. Hey, I've, I've got one for you along the lines of what Eric's talking about. All right, so the, I think one of the key things to, to be able to do is to also, besides sports and things, is to get access to wherever you want um, through either the public relations department of whatever it is that you want, right? Or, or and this, is, this might be a bigger end because it's easier, the social media department of wherever you want. So for example, hypothetical situation, you're a architectural photographer, you love shooting buildings, right? So if you show up on somebody's property and start shooting buildings, like there's a nice building downtown or whatever, you, start, it, you can count the seconds before a security guard comes out. However, what you could do is find out the, well, so I'm just gonna pick a building, it's the Bank of America building, right? Which in Tampa, I don't, I don't know if you'd really go shoot the Bank of America, it's not that exciting, but I'm just using it because it's a building in Tampa. It's you, an okay looking building. I'm sure you could probably yeah. do something good of it. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it's it's not a bad looking building at all, but it's not what I would it wouldn't be my first choice for ooh, cool. Or I mean, if you did the beer can, maybe. No, you know mm -hmm. who's got a really cool building downstairs? The uh, in Tampa is the Glazer Children's Museum. Oh yeah. Cool museum. Uh, then that's that's the kind of building that you would take a trip to there to shoot that building. Uh, the Florida Aquarium is another building yeah. outside architecture is really neat. Now, you know and I know that the Glazer Museum probably has a Twitter account and an Instagram account. So you go on there and you tag them and send them a direct message on Twitter. Don't go to the manager of the company and I'll go to their social media account. Hi, I'm an, I'm a architectural photography. I live in the Tampa Bay. I love the looks of your building. Is there any way that we could arrange where I could come and, and shoot one night where you have all the lights on and all and, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll give you some great pictures for social media. Because guys, this is the thing. Right now, every social media account in the world needs tons of photos for their Instagram account, for their Twitter. I mean, you got a person whose job is is on the so social true. media person so for the Glazer or, or for the Florida Aquarium mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you want to shoot, and they need photos. Now they can go out and take some, or they can hire a professional photographer. Maybe they're unlikely to do that, but you could say, "Look, I want to come in one night. Can you get everybody to leave the lights on so all the lights are on on the outside, and it's okay for me to set up a tripod on your property and do this kind of stuff." You will be stunned. I've been stunned at how the lengths that they go, are you kidding me? Yes, can we do it next week? When can you do it? And my whole agreement is I will give you images to use for your social media accounts. That's it. So if you're looking for access, you could go to the company, but I think you start through the social media. Now, the social media person might have to go to the person and say, hey, this guy contacted me. He's got pretty good stuff. I saw his portfolio. You know, He sent me five or six shots he's done of other buildings. He wants to come here one night and shoot. 
Right. He wants to be inside when everyone's gone, right? You don't want to go shoot. So uh, I did this in Sydney, Australia. I was doing a photo walk there and I was on vacation with my wife. And uh, I, I told a buddy I want to shoot in there and he got me the information for the PR department. And what did the PR department want? I said, I'll give you images for your, for your Instagram and all. And not only did they want them, but they were like, hey, when you share these, will you please share these images and use these hashtags? Here, take a look on screen. This is a place where you're forbidden to shoot. This is the inside of the Sydney Opera House, the iconic Sydney Opera House in uh, Sydney. And I had the run of the place. Now they'll, they'll tell you, I can get you 30 minutes, but then once you're there, they're like, oh no, let's keep going. Do you want to go here? Do you want to go there? Yeah, once they see what you're producing. Right. Yeah, yeah. once they get excited about it, then oh, they're no. like... That was the thing with like the moon. We stayed way longer than we had talked oh, about yeah, staying. Because right? start, they start seeing how cool it is. They're like, well, let's do another one. Let's do another <laughs> shot. Yep, absolutely. So that's the kind of thing where you, you get opportunities to... Now, I'm going to take it one step further. If you, if you really want to keep these doors open, when I came back from Sydney, I made prints for the, I didn't tell her, I never told the woman, she was so nice. I never told her that I was going to make prints. I just made nice big prints and I shipped them to Australia. And it was, the prints were not expensive. And at that fact, I think I printed them here. Uh, and uh, the one I, I, I'm gonna show you, talk to you about is this one. So once we were there, she introduced me to the guys that are in the lighting crew. And they're like, what color do you want the place? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, we can change the color of the entire opera house with a flip of a switch. He goes, here, I'll show you. And here's blue and there's all these different colors. So I, I took this blue one and a couple others. I got them printed nice and big and I sent them to the Sydney Opera House. And the woman wrote me back and she was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I'm so freaked out and this is amazing. And by the way, the blue one is hanging behind my desk and I'll see it every day and all this. So, so my print is hanging behind her desk now. If I were to go back to Sydney, Australia now, years, years later, and she was still there, I could send her a note. Hi, you wouldn't remember me. My name's Scott Kelby. I'm an American photographer. Uh, I'm the guy that gave you the print that's behind your desk, the blue, that blue print, that, that's from me. Any chance I could get in there next? I'm gonna be there in two weeks. Any chance I can get in there? What's she gonna say, Eric? Absolutely. Absolutely. Can you also go to our other theater that we own and shoot <laughs> over there? I mean, it's amazing how these things, and I did the same thing with football. Um, I wanted to be able to shoot the uh, the pyrotechnics and the pyrotechnics guys are the only guys that can allow you to do it and they don't want you to do it. They don't they don't want to mess with you. They got their own worries and now you got a photographer trying to set up yeah, cameras that's near one their more thing they got to worry about and yep. security I and talked safety. To the guy. And... I was really nice. He let me do it one time and I made him a print and I brought it to the next game and I had five cameras set up for, for the NFC Championship game. I got his guys not only helping me mount up in the truss where the team runs out, I, he would assign one of his guys to watch my camera to make sure nobody tipped it over or hit it when the players or the cheerleaders or anything are coming out of the tunnel. I mean, you're talking, guys, these are things that you can do to get access. Now, there's a couple more comments coming in here. Uh, Stewart's got a comment. Yeah, Stuart saying, uh, it's also nice when you find uh, someone who can get you access. I was traveling to San Francisco and hired Doc Miles uh, to take me around. Um, he had access to the beach near the Golden Gate Bridge that is normally off limits. And I got great shots there. Stuart, that's so good. So mm -hmm. what you got was a photo fixer. Yep. So photo fixers are people that you hire and it's worth the, I've never hired a photo fixer where it wasn't worth it. They have, like you said, access to a beach near the Golden Gate yep. that nobody has. They got connections. They know the locals. Um, I, when I was in Dubai, uh, we wanted to get on the roof of a hotel. The yep. guy give, it knows the security guard, and the security guard wants a tip. He gives the security guard 20 bucks. Let me take Boom. you to the top. Done. Like 20 bucks and you're on the top of a building in Dubai shooting these amazing yeah. shots. It's like, so that's a photo fixer. Photo fixers are somebody that has access, that can yeah. get you access. Uh, Joe's got a comment here um, that, uh, uh, what does he say here? I got a press pass from a small local newspaper to get me into political events. I share the images with them, post, I put a lot of the images online. Joe, that reminds me of a story. So a buddy of mine um, wanted to be able to shoot... Um, Oh, he went to his look. He shot a 4th of July parade. Now, he's a good photographer. Mm -hmm. But he shot a 4th of July parade, and he sent the images to the local 
uh, the PR, the travel, whoever it handles, come to this town, in your town. Like, what is, yeah, what's they, it called? Um, the like visitor the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, Chamber of Commerce or whatever. Send them the pictures. They're like, the oh my God, board. I love this. Yeah, Can you board. cover all these events? Yeah. And now he's got carte blanche to go into concerts and sporting events. He got tickets to shoot the, the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, not tickets, media <clears throat> passes. He's down in the dugouts. I mean, this guy, all from sending them pictures from a, from a 4th of July parade. Guys, there are so many opportunities that, that are out there for you. The but power, you've got to take that first step. The power of the print step. is big. I'm sorry? The power, the power of the print. like power having, of the print is huge. Because like just sending, if you would have just attached that photo in an email and shipped it off to yeah, um, he'd via email it. to the Sydney Opera House. Yeah, she would have appreciate it, but she would have never remembered me. Yeah. I, I would have been the 100th photographer yep. that emailed her a picture, but probably the only photographer that sent her a print. So there's and, and a question is, here from David. Oh yeah, David's asking uh, us, uh, asking you probably more than me. Uh, the what lens do you use for tight shots for football? So David, the the lens that is used on the sidelines is the number one lens. Everybody out there has it. Is a 400 millimeter, 2.8. Crazy expensive. Now I also have a 400 millimeter. I have a 200 to 400 with a built-in. Uh, 1. 1.4 4, tele yeah. extender. It's built in. It's an amazing lens. It's the sharpest lens in the world. And by the way, if you want to buy it, I have it on eBay right now. I'm selling it on eBay because I just don't shoot as much sports as I used to. But it is pristine. It's like mint, and I got a ridiculous price. It's probably just over half of what the new one would cost, and it is a brilliant lens. So, David, if you're really looking for the ultimate lens for wildlife or for aviation, Sports. Or for any kind of sports, any sports, because you get 580s with a flip of the switch. Or I tell you, it works great for eBay. rocket photography, too. It works great for what? Rocket photography, For rocket too. photography. Eric Barr's for rocket photography. But anyway, it is, it is an amazing lens, and I'm selling it on eBay. Woo! Go buy it. Okay. We out of time? We're out of time. We're out of time. Yeah, we're out of time. All right. So, I guess the moral of today's story, the moral of today's story, if there really is one, is that... You can get access. It just takes a little thinking outside the box. And if I was talking to a friend and they go, dude, I want to be able to shoot this, whatever. Start with their social media people. And be extremely nice and make it worth their while. You got to do something for them. There's got to be a trade. It can't be just, I want to come take pictures and I leave. Make it, give them a reason to say yes. And the reason is everybody's got social media pictures they need. You might bring something new to the table and send them a few really nice pics with your request. Like if you're going to send a, a, a note to, um, I keep saying the Glazer Museum, but include a couple of your best shots in there, not 20, not 30, two or three in your email and say, hey, oh, you know, and it's easy to find out who the social media people are. Just go to their social media account and tag them. Go tag them on Twitter. Twitter's probably the best place, isn't it? Twitter I mean, Instagram, or Instagram. Yeah, one of those two. Twitter yeah, but or Instagram. It's not as easy to get a hold of people on Instagram as it is on Twitter. You can it DM isn't. people. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, Twitter's good. And everybody's got a Twitter account. So. You do both. Do both. Do both. Well, what do you have to lose? But it's like I tell people. So, so if you want access to the roof of a hotel, you want to shoot from a rooftop when you're traveling, you're doing travel photography, you want to travel, you want to get access. Don't go to the manager of their hotel. The manager of the hotel is thinking of one thing, safety. Ah, I probably shouldn't let you up there. No, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, I know who to go to. Or you know who to go to. Go to the concierge. Yep. That's the concierge's first thought is, I'm going to get a tip. And so the concierge might either go to the manager and go, hey, this guy wants to shoot in the roof. I'm going to take him up there. It'll be 10 minutes. It'll be great. Or what I've had them do, I've had them say, I can't let you on the roof. But tomorrow I got somebody checking out from a suite on the top floor. How about if you shoot from their balcony? Yes, 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 yes. Concierge, concierge, contact them before you even stay there. I'm gonna be staying on these dates. Any chance I could get up there to shoot? I'm a photographer, I'll, I'll share some shots yeah. with your social media people. That's the story. Do you have anything else to bring to this party, Mr. Kuhner? Uh, we blasted I think out I here. think we partied out. We're partied out. Winners. Oh, winners. Contest. Winners of stuff. Woo! I thought, you know, I felt like there was something we hadn't done. Yeah, Who I think we're going to get them right now. There we go. Get our winners. Who do we got? So we got 
Shirley Huckle uh, from Colorado is getting the Lytra. Lytra, Lytra please. please. And then uh, Eric Starling is getting the Goosenecks. Then Dave Dixon is one, has won your uh, book, your digital photography book. And then uh, Bruce M. has won the Boris FX Optics. Nice. And then uh, finally, Lisa Popson Monroe has won the Slick Pick account. So, and uh, you know, um, so they contact us, they email Grid prize at kelby1.com. Yeah, grid prize at kelby1.com. And everybody can win because uh, if you want to get that Slick Pick account, uh, you can get 50% off. If you go to slickpick.com forward slash kelby1, you get 50% off a Slick Pick account. So yeah, and everybody's by the way, a winner. So I switched over to, Swi to, to uh, Slick, Slick Pick. Pick. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to like not do too much at one time. And if you go to my blog, just go to click at scottkelby.com. And you go up to the top where it says portfolio and uh, click it and it takes you to my slick pick thing which I did myself now when the, the one we're giving away uh, is literally you get a, a designer to help you do it but I didn't need a designer it was so easy I just went there and and was able to put it together very quickly on my own but if you want one it, it comes with it so uh, yeah I mean that's the thing you could definitely so Lisa uh, if you get stuck you yeah. can just, uh, uh, the one of the designers them. will help you from beginning to end. Yeah. All right. Our time together has come and gone, but it has been very fun. Thank you guys very much. And uh, we will, uh, oh, next Wednesday, we have a very special guest. So you guys will probably remember a few months ago, we had Greg from Topaz on here showing some of their new stuff. They've got some new AI stuff that is amazing. He's agreed to come on the show as our guest next week. We'll still have our regular stuff, but we're going to bring Greg on. And uh, the stuff they're doing with AI, mm -hmm. Eric, you know. I know. Er Eric is is suckered. I mean, he's so I'm into so, their... I'm so into their stuff. Their noise reduction? No, noise reduction? Yeah, noise and reduction sharpening. and sharpening. Oh, Eric so lives good. in those two programs. He is so... Love he it. Is, he is like in, in, in. He's sucked in big time. So... Oh. Next week, we're going to see the next level of their stuff. So Greg's a really great presenter. You'll get a kick out of him. And uh, now, last time he gave our, our readers a deal, too. I imagine we might see another one We're going one to pressure. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to tell him you can't come on without giving a discount. So anyway, that's next week. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And Greg's just a really fun guy and really smart. Anyway, we'll see you guys and Grego next week right here in the grid. Thanks, Mr. Kuna. Yeah, thanks, thanks to our team here, Christina and her crew. Oh, yeah. And uh, Jason and Magic Juan and Magic Ron. No, All Rock and Ron. Sure. We, had, we haven't developed one for him yet, but we're working on it. All right. Have a good one. We'll see you guys next week. Would you believe us if we told you that you could fit studio lighting in your pocket? Well, Lytra has made it possible. Lytra is a global award-winning brand that designs and manufactures professional-grade camera lights that are compact, rugged, and waterproof. Whether you're using Lytra gear in a photo studio or underwater, Lytra's mission is to provide content creators with flexible and unlimited lighting tools that can mount on any camera, anywhere. Their lights come with a high CRI or color rendering index, making them some of the most color-accurate lights in the industry. Due to the light's compact and rugged design, photographers are able to use the lights in ways that their studio lighting never could. Lytra has also made multiple lighting accessories available to fit your every need as a creator. Whether you're shooting portraits, nailing a product shot, or even flying your drone, they have got you covered. Lytra enables photographers and filmmakers to focus on their craft and create something beautiful. What will you create? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Planapod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Light is photography. That's why, besides the camera itself, perhaps the most powerful tool a photographer has is a flash. When you hold it in your hand, you're holding the ability to create light on demand. When you understand light, you can create drama, mood, and emotion. 
For many photographers, learning flash has been an uphill battle, and some have simply given up. But that's all about to change. What if you could spend two full days with two of our industry's most passionate, gifted teachers, who would finally demystify flash for the beginner and push and challenge more experienced flash users? Can you imagine just how far you would go in those two days? This fall, you'll have that opportunity as two of the top flash authors and educators come together to create a truly unique learning experience. Joe McNally, the man who opened the photographic world to the real power of flash and inspired an entire generation of flash users through his books, The Moment It Clicks and The Hot Shoe Diaries, along with Scott Kelby, author of The Flash Book the number one best-selling book on Flash for the past three years have come together to coach you, to mentor you, to teach, inform and illuminate by sharing their latest Flash techniques, their hard-earned secrets and even the post-processing and retouching work that goes into making stunning, remarkable images as you uncover a whole new world of light powered by just a simple Flash. It's two full days, all presented live, all online. This is the Flash Photography Conference. The power of light is in your hands.